Yo, 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 Eagle Dre, but you can call me Dre. And today we're going to be showing you how to play tier limit on a master duel. Let's get it. First things first, if you guys like the video, like it. If you guys like my channel, subscribe to it. Go ahead and go over to twitch.tv slash ego underscore Dre. If you guys want to see me playing live, I play both Master Duel and IRL on my stream. So if you guys want to check out me playing live, see how the games work, go ahead and check that out. It'll be right over here. And yeah, cool. Now, let's get into how this video is basically going to be broken down. Um, it's going to be broken down into two games. Both games are going to be tier limit mirrors. Um, the first one's going to be us going first as a tier limit player, and then us going second as a tier limit player. So I think um, the main thing to take away from this is that we'll be going over how you should be thinking about your hands when you're opening it up and what the Master Duel meta is going to kind of consist of and how we're going to feel kind of with the, with the Master Duel meta. Um, a couple caveats first. First things first. Um, this decklist isn't perfect, I don't think. I think there's definitely different changes I can you can make. Uh, this is just what I've been using, basically, to climb to diamond. Um, I think a lot of the deck itself is, like, it's very flexible. You can do all kinds of different things. There's all kinds of different one-ofs you can play. Um, there's different arguments for different tech cards that you should be playing as well, too. But currently, at the moment, this is where I stand, and this is what has been pretty successful for me um and just remember like as we go along with this right there's all kinds of different ways that the game can change Yu-Gi-Oh is an ever-changing metagame it's always changing um and as people progress to figure out what works to beat the deck even here in master duel um right people are going to think of different ways to beat the deck in best of ones um deck builds are always going to change so you know so a lot of the these meta defining options aren't going to be um correct all the way through however uh hopefully i can give you some kind of basis and understanding of exactly what you want to do when looking at your hand and it'll it'll help you as a tier player and i i think i believe if you're a tcg player as well too it'll possibly help you a little bit as well too so all right cool let's get into the first game cool okay so first things first uh let's go ahead and see what we got going on here right obviously like i said this is going to be a game going first our first hand looking at it we have scream we have called by the grave which is really really nice it kind of sucks that we opened up the snow that's kind of neg but even still um having rhino heart scream is really nice for two reasons if you can assume always assume that you're playing against the tier mirror always always assume you're playing against the tier mirror so um the first thing you can think of is all right if we activate the scream we normally summon the rhino heart this scream is going to chain block our rhino heart this does two things for us first of all it's going to make it so that the rhino heart doesn't get instant ashed which is big um if it gets impermed we still have extra mills off of the scream which is nice so that way we can basically almost guarantee that we'll get some kind of fusion or some kind of plus off right as we get our mills um going through not only that they can't chain hoveness to this so because hoveness has to directly react to an uh, monster effect activating on the field um if you do chain link one rhino heart chain link two scream they can't chain to the rhino heart so they're gonna have to chain later on in the combo which is pretty relevant and then you're gonna see why it's relevant here as well too so let's go ahead and see what we do basically we activate the scream normal summon the rhino rhino effects chain link one scream chain link two Mill three, let's see our hits. We hit a Guido Beast. Now, even though we're assuming that we're playing against tier, um, oh, you always shotgun the Aguido. It doesn't matter, genuinely. You always shotgun the, the Aguido. One, because it's best of ones. Two, because if you're able to get to a shuffler as well too, depending on how it pans out, there's still 100% ways to be able to beat out um, basically the tier deck still going first, even if you do hit mills off of them, whether you have a shuffler or not genuinely not only that i have a call by the grave in my hand so i'm feeling pretty safe i'm feeling decently safe enough to where i can be able to play and if there is uh basically a way that they summon a um tier monster i have the kelbeck in hand as well too off of their sends to be able to summon itself back out and if i can just clear the board with whatever i have i'm also able to go into a dweller probably mid combo um there's a couple options but don't just be afraid right of to activate the Sagito here because you want to be able to play during their turn it's a challenge that you have to take and once you start learning how this basically works how these multiple interactions in the grave work is how you'll start getting really good at the tier mirror so we're gonna go chain link one agito chain link two beast so that way we can chain block our guy oh wait we had one more oh da 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 yeah the rhino heart send so yeah so we're gonna go ahead and get our fusion off as well too so we're gonna do our chain link one hovness chain link to agito always make sure that you're chaining obviously so that when it resolves backwards your agito is milling last or a beast is milling last right i'm gonna chain block it with beast so that way the agito doesn't get ashed but you want to make sure that your agito is milling 
first so that way um when it does mill you're able to fuse last so that when it resolves you're able to summon out your monster with all the monsters in the grave that you have off of the agito so we're gonna go ahead and do that builds our chain links chain link one chain link two chain link three right so chain link three was the beast the beast drew me into ash which is very big here and then we go ahead and mill the five off of the agito they mill five and surprise surprise they are also on tier limit so our hotness resolves puts back so i what i what ended up happening there was i milled a rhino um the rhino ended up being used for a uh because i didn't have any tears in my hand to be able to special it back ended up being used for the tier name so that's basically all i'm kind of looking for so that way i can make a kit kalos um we're probably not gonna make winda here or probably not gonna make winda yet but that's also an option so make sure to keep that in mind a big thing that i also hit was scream medora so we're gonna go ahead and hit those off kit kalos goes ahead and summons Summon Kikalos, chain link one Kikalos, chain link two Scream. So that way I'm again, I'm chain blocking, making sure that you're always chain blocking as you go. One big thing to remember though is that he has double shufflers in his grave. So now we have to be wary about what we're gonna do with those shufflers. Luckily for us, we also hit a shuffler ourselves. So we're gonna be able to deal with that. And not only that, this is probably best case scenario because we missed completely when it came to tier names, except for the one that we send with Rhino Heart. So now he doesn't have anything to hit with the Ashizus. When you're playing with the Ashizus in grave, you wanna make sure that you're always capable of hitting um, tier names, just pure tier names, not Rhino, not Kid Kalos, not any other stupid cards, right? You're hitting either full tier names or you're using them to deter him from shuffling my stuff back. So because I ended up not hitting any tier names, he doesn't have any good targets for the Ishizus. So I'm going to go ahead and probably target those Ishizus and put them back. So let's go ahead and get our effects. Boom. Scream as Soliac. Kid Kalos adds Merly because now we're looking for the mill 8 because obviously we didn't hit any tier names. So we probably still need to mill a little bit. Uh, but this also gets the level 2 onto the board as well too. And then get the Soliac out of my hand. So what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to end up going Medora. Shuffle back both of these shufflers so that way they can't shuffle during my turn. So Kid Kalos is resolving. Medora activates. Targets both the shufflers. He chains the Medora. This is terrible. Don't do this. Do not do this. Because there is a 100% high chance that if I don't hit off of my 8, which is very unlikely, don't get me wrong, but if I don't hit off of my 8, I might still have to Kelbeck again um, to be able to hit him. He's just activating this card just to activate it. Not only does that limit his choices, because in Master Duel, we only have 5 Ishizu names, or 5 shufflers to be able to use. Not only does that... Uh, what's it called limit his usage throughout the duel it also makes it so that during this turn if i decide to kill back him again and he hits medora now all of a sudden his medora is dead so don't do this like just don't don't activate these just for the heck of it you still have to value them because there's still a high chance that i might still have to make him mill right or there might be a chance where there, there's a situation where he ends up with a medora in the grave anyways so don't do this he shuffles back my beast so that way i can't be somebody he shuffles back my desire so i can draw into it which is fine. It's whatever. I put back his shufflers. I activate Kit Kalos um, Raw on the field so that way I can be able to special summon the Merlin and then he chains the Hobness here. I don't want him to play. So this is where the Ash Blossom comes in handy because I, like I said again, because I chained block this earlier, I was able to get into a position where I was able to draw Ash and then I have Ash in my hand now for the Hobness as he's activating it. So he activates that. I go ahead and Ash Blossom it then. So that way now he doesn't have anything to play. Now he's not playing during my turn. I'm going to go ahead and get my eight mil. So chain link one Kit Kalos, chain link two Merlin. Merly mills the three. I hit some really good ones. I hit a Shuffler, which I already used, but I hit a uh, Sharon and my Diviner, which is going to come up later. And then I mill my five. I just hit another Sharon and I hit a Rhino. So this is pretty big, right? The options here become, do I want to activate Chain Link 1, Sharon, Chain Link 2, Rhino to be able to bring back? The only issue here, right, is that I don't have a way to be able to get the Soliac back if I trigger this Rhino. However, because I'm playing against this deck, um, I think it's important, a little bit important, that the Dweller gets onto the board. So, because of this, I end up deciding to use the Rhino Heart effect to be able to send the Soliac. And maybe hit a Scream later, but I already hit a Scream, which is the biggest issue. So, I already hit a Scream. I already hit uh, the Kick Callus effect. Because of those two things, I want to be... A I, because of those two things, I'm not able to get Soliac onto the end board so my end board has to be insane because the soliac the crimes the meta noises all of those trap cards those are all really important in the tier limit mirror and they're really important just in tier limit in general so you always want to try to end up on any of these traps just in this situation i'm not able to end up on it either way so it won't be the most optimal board but it will be a decent uh, a strong enough board to beat the mirror so rhino heart basically switches some of itself sending the soliac to the grave sharon decides to fuse obviously using the kit kalos that's in the grave as well too uh to be able to make rule kalos Rule Kalos, now that I have a protection versus Nib or whatever, any kind of other special summons that he has as well too, I go ahead and resolve my Soliac. He chains and activates a Guido from the hand. Now, I hate this. 
um, but don't do this, right? Because there's no point in doing this. You're just putting a level four on the board to hopefully be able to play next turn um, because he doesn't have anything to bring back with the Agito, right? So don't trigger this Agito just to trigger it. Like it's probably more useful in the hand, honestly, if you're to draw into a Sharon or something of some kind. So that way you can at least send it to the grave. Or if you draw into Keldo Medora uh, and you have Keldo Medora, Sharon, and another monster, you have a free way to make a level four without having to use your normal summon. So just, just don't do not do this for, for any like specific reason, uh, just to be able to summon it because there's a high chance that I'm probably gonna get rid of it while on my turn even without the pearl arena so he summons the agito for no reason basically just bring it out not really a point in doing that i basically add the sharon so that way i'm able to summon out another level four so add the sharon we overlay we make the dweller that we wanted that's very very big activate the sharon effect this helps us a lot only because we're able to send the snow to the grave so now we have multiple ways to interact with my opponent so i go sharon send snow i mill a couple three i think i like hard whiff i put the beast back in there which is nice this makes it so that the option i have next turn um, during his turn is I'm able to basically create a window if I really really need it even though he's already under dweller um, Wind is gonna be really really nice against uh, any Zeus plays that he tries to do uh, It just it'll just make it so that he, he'll, he'll have to swing over my monster in a sense um, to be able to deal with it. So Boom, I go ahead and link those two away for elf elf effects gonna trigger I'm gonna target the diviner This is gonna be super big here even though I already have two of the shuffler names in in my uh, in my grave The diviner is able to bring itself back send any of the fairies inside my deck So that's either um, another shuffler if a Kelbeck if I really needed to Kelbeck again Or I could just send another shuffler so that way um, he has multiple ways to he has multiple I have multiple shufflers in there so that way he'll have to use all three Targets off of one shuffler to be able to get rid of all three of the shufflers in the grave So I basically send back bring back diviner diviner effect activate send a shuffler make it a level six I activate snow preemptively so that way I can get a level four onto the grip onto the field Make a level four link those or sink those two away make a baron Activate baron pop the agito see again like I said why make the agito like it's just gonna go to the grave Like there's no point in you making it in front of me like there's like I have a whole turn to be able to deal with it I'm probably gonna find a way to deal with it and that's basically what I do So now our end board ends up being Rokalos a baron to floor elf to bring back either diviner or bring back uh, the Merly So that way it can get anything off the scream will trigger um, I also have the dweller during his turn so obviously he can't play with his grave I think it's probably just looking like raps he ends up drawing his turn, I go draw his Dweller, and he picks up his cards. So, I, I think, again, like I said, the biggest thing to learn from this matchup, for sure, is that um, he you, you don't want to activate your effects too preemptively for no reason, right? Just because, just in case, if a situation happens. To be fair, I had a lot of answers there, there as well, too, which is just a testament to the way that the deck, deck is built. But I feel like cards like Ash, I feel like cards like Called by the Grave, um, I feel like all of those cards are still really important for you going first, just as much as a lot of the other combo pieces that people are trying to play. But yeah, let's move. Cool. So let's go ahead and look at our hand going second against Tier Limit, right? So already first things first, um, we noticed the Ash Blossom in the hand, which is really, really good. Obviously, it's always gonna be it's gonna be decent against something, right? It's a, like a lot of people say that you know this card is just terrible in the mirror. Um, it isn't. It isn't. That's my thing. Is like I, I really don't think it is that bad because a lot of the times in situations with the way that people have been playing the deck lately, um, especially here on Master Duel, a lot of people are just sending uh are just sending uh basically their fairies and triggering their millers and mill five is pretty big to ash i really like ashing that and they're not chain blocking it correctly either if they really did want to chain block it they're not chain blocking it or a lot of them are cha chaining it to the end which is something that i like to do as well too is i i do like to chain it at the end um and ash blossom hitting that in a crucial moment is still pretty good and not only that hitting it on any normals on any big normal summon or maybe even using it to just hit kid kalos it's not terrible right it's just a lot of the times they have opportunity to chain block things but ash blossom is still good and hitting hobness hitting sharon even in the hand um it's not terrible i, I don't think it's a bad card i think it's really good not only that the most important thing is it just stops maxi like <laughs> it, like in this format maxi is just so big right and you don't want to have to sit here and not be able to play just because of maxi right so i feel like ash blossom is still really important Medora obviously being the hand is really big. Basically, if you play into the board, you can send the Kel back to the grave and then uh, mill five and you already have a shuffler on the field, which is pretty nice. So that's kind of the way that you want to be able to play it. And obviously, Pearl Arena is the one of his bridges broken in the hand. So let's see basically what we have to do. Let's see what our opponent starts off with here. Our opponent starts off with a Pearl Arena of his own that's actually pretty broken. Uh, because he started off with this play, it's very ashable because you can kind of tell, like usually when someone activates Pearl Arena, add Rhino Heart, and then instantly use the normal summon on Rhino Heart, they don't have any extenders. They he probably doesn't have a Sharon. Um, he didn't activate Keldo. Keldo to send a, a Miller. Usually, that's how I would do it. If I were playing the turn out, I don't want to use my Rhino Heart and or my normal summon until later. And I've, I've baited out at least, at least a couple hunt traps. Um, because he's instant shoving it, I can kind of assume that he doesn't really have another play other than normal summon the Rhino Heart to be able to get his engine started. So this is very, very ashable. So we go ahead and hit it with Ash. 
He hits me with a call by the grave. That's just good deck building. It is what it is. Call by the grave is crazy. Banishes my Ash Blossom. He senses Shiri and Shiri activates. So now we're kind of in a situation here, right? Where we go, he makes a Kit Kalos. Boom, Kit Kalos effect. And I think we have the opportunity here because the card was sent to the graveyard to trigger the Kalbeck. Actually, no, I don't think we do. No, yeah, we don't, we don't. Never mind, never mind. But anyways, he's able to special summon Kit Kalos, activate the Kit Kalos effect. He adds Merlin to his hand, activating the Kit Kalos, special summoning the Merlin to be able to mill a couple cards. So, let's keep moving. Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2. Mills a full eight. Let's see what he's got going on here. He hit a scream, which is really good. He had a shuffler, which is really good. And obviously he has the Merly, uh, or I mean the Kit Kalos in the grave. So he's going to be able to make a real Kalos here. He ends up hitting in a Guido. So knowing that what I'm on, he doesn't technically know what I'm on because all he saw was an Ash. Knowing what I'm on, he's down to a Guido me. Uh, he's playing King of the Swamp, which I'm not a fan of, honestly. Um, King of the Swamp is a cool card. Uh, I, I think it's very useful in the sense that it um, makes it so that your mills are nicer and easier i guess in a sense but there's not enough fusion monsters in the game to be able to really justify playing that card because you only have three fusion summons and the only things we're making is this this and this off of king of the swamp so it's like a lot of the times you're kind of just in a situation where you're already doing this and you make your deck you make your hand brickier uh than what it is because you just have a card that basically does nothing going first or second it adds polymerization cool that's nice i guess you can play chimera so that's, that's kind of nice i guess but i mean a lot of the times it's it's like decent it's like decent enough to where um it's like decent enough to where you don't really need to play it and i would rather be playing cards that help me going second right i mean that's just talking deck build not gameplay anyways he basically activates the scream activates the agito gives me a chance to mill five i mill my five let's see what i got going on i have an agito which i'm definitely gonna activate um a hobness which i'm definitely gonna fuse with i, I have a chance to make window and then a beast which i'm definitely gonna draw with he ends up milling five he ends up hitting a shuffler and a couple trap cards the trap cards are gonna be really good here um and he just ends up using hitting a lot of cards so we're kind of in an interesting situation right he adds soliac to his hand merely fuse away the key kalos make rule kalos soliac add i activate hobness my uh, my hobness my agito and my beast so that way i can chain block it as much as possible right so hobness agito beast he chains his shuffler basically targeting my hobness and my beast and his mask change second for whatever reason um this is fine uh, i don't think it's bad for him to hit my, my my guy that's pretty good so i chain in this situation i'm able to chain my kelbeck because he sent cards to the grave basically and he still has the monster for uh on the field especially summon monster that i can target so i'm able to try to bounce back his rukalos to force him to do something with it he ends up using it in the gates of my Kelbeck, Kelbeck goes to the grave from my hand. Very important. Um, it's a good bait in this situation because not only uh, does he use his Rukalis effect, now I'm able to trigger my Kelbeck so I can keep playing on his turn. So he shuffles back my cards. I draw in the snow off of the beast. I mill, he, I mill five off of the Agito, and I end up hitting a Shuffler and a Rhino Heart, which is really nice. He adds Rhino Heart. He activates Hobness. I chain link two, chain link three, basically chain uh, the Keldo to, to target the Hobness to put it back. And I put back his shuffler. So notice that he has two shufflers in the grave, right? A bunch of uh, tier monsters already. The only thing, and, and the tier basically activating on my turn. So what I hit as well too, wasn't very good. All I hit was a Rhino Heart and what was it, a Kelbeck? So I don't even think I'm using the Rhino Heart effect here, right? Yeah, I'm not. So I just hit a Kelbeck basically. So I'm able to use my shuffler on a moment where like I can put back his shufflers and his hobness all at the same time and he's not able to get full value off of them on me because he already used one of the medoras or one of the keldos and all he has is the medora left so i try to put it back so my hope is that he doesn't hit another medora we basically mill off of the Kelbeck. i hit a keldo i hit a merly and i hit a rhino and i hit a soliac which is pretty good i think i already act i don't think i activated a soliac yet and then he hits a medora which is pretty nice and he hits the hobness which he already tried to activate so him re-hitting the Medora is, pretty, is kind of a bad scenario for me, but we're still in a situation where we're playing on his turn, so we kind of have a lot of leverage here. So this is Chainlink 1, uh, Merly, Chainlink 2, what was that, Soliac? And then he goes Medora, targeting my Merly, targeting both of my Rhinos, uh, for whatever reason. So now we, he's used both Shufflers during his turn, and they haven't gotten the best value. He used um, one Shuffler on one Fuse, and then he used another Shuffler on another Fuse, and so basically put back my Rhino. So that's fine, only because... Um, What's important is that even though he's doing this during all during his turn, during my turn, he won't have the shufflers to use. So that's still very important because all of the stuff in his grave is basically engine. And so it's just stuff that I can play with. So again, like I said, boom, shuffles those back in. I get my head off of the Soliac. He sets three back row, which is pretty scary. Three back row. 
and he has a Rukalis on the field. So now I kind of know what I'm dealing with, right? Um, let's go ahead and draw our card. Boom. Draw Madobo Medora. So this is actually kind of heat here because I know what I'm dealing with. He has one Perlerino. He has one Rukalos. One of those has to be Solyek, right? And then two other face downs that I don't think I know. Um, and now he has no shufflers. So it shouldn't be too hard of a board to break. Only issue right here is be, is um, I don't have too many extenders. The only actual extender I have is Medora. So I'm going to try to Pearl Arena to try to get to my um, Sharon. So we go to Medora activate. Boom, boom. Get a shuffler into the grave. He chained Soljak for whatever reason. Doesn't even activate it. I activate the Pearl Arena. See what he basically does. He chains Twin Twister, which I, I had no clue. Uh, it, it's honestly not terrible here <laughs> in this situation it wasn't that bad only because um obviously pearl is broken so he just makes it so that i can't resolve that effect but it's still fine i'm able to normal summon the snow snow activate effect basically to bait out this rule Carlos. i want to be able to make it so that his rule Carlos um doesn't just activate so that way maybe i can go for some form of zeus line here to where i can swing into this because it's face down now with an xyz monster and be able to zeus the board he goes Imperm, which is the other face down, which is still pretty good. Makes it so that I can't force it out. So now my idea here is I'm going to go for the Dweller, activating Dweller's effect to put it to put the snow into the grave. I have 12 cards in the grave. I can activate snow again to bring it back out to go for the same line to put this face down and then go for Zeus again. So we detach. He goes Soliac to negate. And this is this is where things get a little interesting, right? Because he goes Soliac to negate. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, the only thing he has to get rid of is the Rokalos. And he hasn't used the Rokalos effect to negate my dude. So... If that's the case, I think from what I'm assuming, right, is he had he knew he remembered that I had Hovness in my hand, so that's why he never used Rukalos. But he's gonna use the Soliac to send the Rukalos. But as you can tell in my grave, I have Shufflers. I'm gonna shuffle back the Rukalos. It's not coming back out. So he basically sends the he sends Rukalos, negates my Dweller, so that way he's not under Dweller for the turn. And then he tries to trigger the Rukalos. I activate the Medor the Keldo, targeting the Rukalos, which is kind of a misplay, and not necessarily a misplay, but kind of in the sense where I know that him putting back rukalos remember that this card doesn't trigger off of just main deck it triggers off of extra deck off of issues as well too so i she's put back the rukalos and he ends up pearl arena popping my dweller so this becomes an issue because i end up targeting all my other like power spells as well too so i can put it back in the deck but this ends up becoming an issue only because um i i don't have any plays after this right what i was thinking is i was just gonna swing for swing for 17 and i wasn't even gonna summon a monster i was just gonna activate the dweller I wasn't even going to summon Zeus, I mean. I was just going to activate the Dweller during his turn. But because he can Pearl Arena pop my Dweller, now I don't even have a Dweller. However, I think I'm still in a stronger situation here, right? Because I basically used my Shufflers, right? I probably shouldn't have used Keldo. I should have used Medora because I knew that the Medora was on the field. Either way, um, I have Medora as my Shuffler. I have Snow in the Grave as a response. And then I have the Hobnus in my hand. And I have Diviner as a starter for the turn after. So, because of this... Um, he's in a situation where he kind of needs to top deck. He has like nice top decks here though. Um, I'm just not sure uh, exactly what he could possibly top deck. But he basically goes, he normal summons Sharon. Um, this doesn't do anything. Swings for 23. I basically go for the snow. Snow uh, banish because obviously you want to be able to put this face down so that way he can't solo yet. Um, to activate its effect uh, But basically the the whole idea is that we just want to be able to put up the snow to be able to put up the body So that way when the diviner comes out next turn whether he does something to it or not I'm able to link those two away to make something right. Uh, this is a level two uh, I could possibly create elf like to be able to bring something back if I have uh, something to bring back Yeah, I could basically bring back the diviner that might be an option, right? Uh, it's just be able to basically to keep some kind of some forms of options as well, too And we don't we just want to make sure that we keep the hobness in hand so that way we can play He benches a couple seven or I banished couple seven. I snow target. He ends up using Soliac here, which is what I wanted him to do because it gets rid of the monster on the board. He Soliac negates, targets this. Now I have the snow in the field and I just Medora spin back his dude. Um, in this situation, I think he misplayed because I put back his thing, right? And then he gets a chance to trigger Pearl Arena. As you can see, he Pearl Arena targets my snow to pop it. What he should have done is he should have Pearl Arena targeted his Soliac so that way he can add back uh, the Sharon and maybe special summon it again. Or because he already uses normal summon, maybe he couldn't, right? Uh, let's go ahead and see what he has in the grave. That was the one Sharon. Yeah, he had the one Sharon that he put back. And then maybe we had Hobnus at least. Oh no, he already used both of the Hobnus. Yeah, so he didn't really have like much of a play if he did pop the Soliac. Maybe the Soliac was a little bit more live in like on the field but in this situation since he doesn't have a hobness in hand i think it's probably more uh like probably better for him to pop his soliac and at least add something to his hand so that way he can probably play during my turn but even then i think the red is kind of on the wall here because i'm going to normal summon this diviner and then trigger it the only issue here right is that i don't have any more shufflers or uh, technically i do 
No, no, sorry. I only have one shuffler left. I basically only have one shuffler and I don't have a live snow. So I am going to normal summon the diviner. I'm probably going to end up sending. It just depends on what I top deck here. And I end up missing, hitting hitting another Hobbitus, which is pretty bad. So we're going to normal summon the diviner and we're going to trigger this Agito. Worst case scenario, right? Kelbeck, worst case scenario is he hits a couple shufflers and a name. So basically I go Kelbeck. We mill R5. Let's see what we got. What we got were some really good things. We got a Sharon. We got a Merle. And we got an Agito. So we can go Agito again as well too. He hits crazy good um two of these right so a shuffler each so that way i kind of in a sense can't play but i also am starting to fuel my grave for my snow which is what makes snow so broken right so uh basically i'm in a situation where i'm going to activate one of these effects and then um if he doesn't target my snow then i'm gonna have then i'm probably gonna chain my snow so i go sharon i go agito he goes medora targeting my sharon both of my guys and my snow so in this situation, I'm going to chain my snow because I already know. Okay, um, if he wants to shuffle back in my cards, I might as well activate the snow so that way I can get the Baron onto the field or the level four onto the field so that way I can make Baron. He's okay with it. I banish those. Banishing one of the Hoppuses from my hand because I didn't need it. Um, and he still has a Keldo on the board or in the grave. So I put those back. I mill another five off of this. So now we're kind of getting down to the wire, which is what's nice about the tier mirror, right? Is a lot of the times when you get down to the wire like this, things get a little hectic. Um, but you can kind of keep track of things that are going on. One big thing that I want to that I want to note is that one, he has a Kelbeck in the grave, right? I'm gonna activate the Agito that I just milled as well too earlier. Um, or did it mill Agito? I thought I milled an Agito. But either way, he only has nine cards left in his deck. So he mills another five, which is yeah, that was the Agito I was talking about. So he mills another five, which we had seen him basically uh, send for. And now all he has in his deck left is six cards. He hits a Gito. I trigger my Rhino, and I trigger my Murley, and I trigger my Soliac, all of the cards that I had to be able to have milled, and he chains his Kel he chains his Kelbeck, and he chains his Agito. Fatal mistake, because he only had six cards in his deck. So because he only had six cards in his deck, uh, he realized it, and he picked up his cards, because if he, once he's done milling, and he doesn't hit any names, I'm just gonna pass turn, <laughs> and he's gonna lose the game hard. Um, and not only that, I have a shuffler in the grave to be able to answer whatever fusion summons he has as well too. So he ends up being in a, in a pretty bad situation. And yeah, that's kind of basically how you play the tier mirrors. I know it's a lot of information. It's a ton of information to, to go off of. But once you start figuring out the chain links and give it a go, just just try the tier mirrors out. They're so fun if you're not already used to the tier mirrors. Um, for those who stuck around, shout out to you guys. Uh, to the end of this video um check out my twitch like i said i'm there playing live i might even be there playing right now and yeah see you guys next time